This is Western Canada, home to 12 million people. The country is connected by a network of intercity passenger rail lines, with service 223 stops in five provinces. Consisting of five routes and over 7,900 kilometers of track, the network connects major cities with rural towns and villages, with overnight trains running several times a week across the country. But how did the system change from its original network to the lines that remain today? My name's Zach, and this is the evolution of the network. The Via Rail network that we know today began to form in April 1978, when Via took over responsibility from Canadian National of their passenger trains, forming the original backbone of the network. The flagship route of the system was the Super Continental, a daily train which ran across the country from Vancouver, British Columbia to Sudbury, Ontario, before splitting into two trains and continuing to Toronto and Montreal. In Vancouver, this service offered connections to a pre-existing Amtrak service which ran daily south to Seattle, Washington. The supercontinental train was supported by a network of smaller regional trains in each province, which provided connections to the train at various stations on the route. In British Columbia, a train ran between Prince Rupert and Jasper, Alberta three days per week, while in Alberta, daily service connected Drumheller to Edmonton. In Saskatchewan, a daily train ran between Regina and Prince Albert, as well as three times weekly trains between Saskatoon and the Pas. Manitoba saw various services connecting the province, with trains running three days per week between Winnipeg and Thompson, and an additional three times weekly train between Winnipeg and Churchill. Also on this line, a once weekly train ran from Woboden to Churchill, bypassing the spur to Thompson. From the Pa, a train ran north to Lynn Lake three days per week, connecting to a five days weekly train between Flin Flon and Osborne Lake. In Northern Ontario, a twice-weekly train supplemented the supercontinental between Winnipeg and Sioux Lookout, as well as an additional local train between Winnipeg and Farlane on summer weekends. From Sioux Lookout, a twice-weekly train connected south to Thunder Bay, while an additional train ran three times weekly between Nikina and Hearst. Further trains were offered three days per week between Hornpain and Manitoubage, as well as further supplemental service for the supercontinental between Sudbury and Nikina three days per week. In October 1978, Canadian Pacific transferred responsibility for their passenger trains to VIA, adding more routes to the network. An additional transcontinental route named the Canadian ran daily from Vancouver, British Columbia to Toronto, Ontario, replacing service between Toronto and Sudbury on the supercontinental. Additional supplemental service ran on this line in Ontario between Sudbury and White River three days per week. In Alberta, daily service ran between Calgary and Edmonton with twice daily service running on weekdays. On Vancouver Island in British Columbia, daily service ran between Victoria and Courtney. Changes were also made to the supercontinental in Quebec and Ontario, with routing being revised to service Vaudreuil et Dorian and no longer traveling through Quebec west of Ottawa. Bigger changes to the network began in 1979, with VIA consolidating some services and adjusting routing on others. In May, service in northern Manitoba between Flin Flon and Osborne Lake was discontinued. In June, VIA made further changes to the Canadian and Supercontinental in Ontario in order to simplify the network. Between Sudbury and Toronto, service was transferred from the Canadian to the Supercontinental, while Supercontinental service between Sudbury and Montreal was transferred to the Canadian. As part of this change, service in North Bay, Ontario was moved to a separate station. In October, Further changes were made to the Canadian and Supercontinental. Around Vancouver, British Columbia, services were consolidated at Vancouver's Pacific Central Station. With this change, stops at Coquitlam and New Westminster were no longer serviced by Via Rail, with a new consolidated station opening at Port Coquitlam. In Ontario, service on the Supercontinental was changed to run joined with the Canadian between Sudbury and Winnipeg. Along the former route, a new service was introduced, running six days per week. Amtrak service from Vancouver was also extended further into the United States, with the southbound train to Seattle continuing to Portland, Oregon. However, service to Portland was short-lived and was withdrawn in April 1980. Also in April, two additional Via Rail services were discontinued. 
In Ontario, service between Hornpane and Manitouaj ended, while Saskatchewan saw trains between Saskatoon and the pass cut. In September, further changes were made in Ontario, with supplemental service between Sudbury and White River, as well as Sudbury and Nikina being changed to run during the summer only. Service between Winnipeg and Sioux Lookout also ended at this time, being replaced instead by a new twice-weekly train between Winnipeg and Armstrong. Further changes were made to the Canadian and Supercontinental in Ontario starting in June 1981. Supercontinental service was split from the Canadian and ran once again via the northern route through Sioux Lookout, replacing the train between Sudbury and Winnipeg. In September, Amtrak service between Vancouver and Seattle was discontinued, closing the station in New Westminster, British Columbia. Then in November, government funding to VIA was cut by 40%, which reduced many routes on the network. Service on the Supercontinental was completely discontinued, with some sections being replaced by various regional services. The Canadian was revised to service some of the former route, with trains east of Sudbury being changed to run to Montreal via Toronto. Between Ottawa and Sudbury, a new train began running three days per week, replacing some of this lost service. Supercontinental service between Sudbury and Winnipeg was replaced by a new train running three days per week, similar to the service running prior to June of that year. In Saskatchewan, the train between Regina and Prince Albert was also cancelled. However, service between Saskatoon and Regina was maintained on a new daily train, which also replaced the Supercontinental between Saskatoon and Winnipeg. A new daily train also covered the former Supercontinental route between Saskatoon and Edmonton, with the Skeena train being extended to Edmonton to cover the remaining gap. Supplementary service along the former Supercontinental in Ontario was also cut at this time, with the train between Sudbury and Akina, as well as Winnipeg and Armstrong, being cancelled. Daily service in Alberta between Edmonton and Drumheller was also abandoned at this time. In Manitoba, the train between Winnipeg and Thompson ended, However, changes on the Hudson Bay train saw the line adjusted to service Kenora, Saskatchewan, with service ending to Swan River, Manitoba, as a result. After these significant cuts in 1981, service on the network operated relatively unchanged for the next couple of years. In June 1984, however, changes to the network continued in Saskatchewan and Alberta. Service between Saskatoon and Regina was discontinued, with a new daily train running directly from Saskatoon to Winnipeg. This service continued west to Edmonton, replacing the existing service on this section. Three days per week, this train also continued west to Prince Rupert, offering direct service from Winnipeg to Prince Rupert. In September, summer service between Winnipeg and Farlane concluded for the final time, with limited trains operating on holiday weekends in the following years. Starting in October 1984, service between Sudbury and Winnipeg was also revised, with the through train being reduced to twice weekly and a new once weekly trip beginning between Winnipeg and Sioux Lookout, and Sioux Lookout and Sudbury. In June 1985, a change in government saw some of the services cancelled in 1981 begin to be restored. Trains on the Canadian between Montreal and Toronto were discontinued, with the Canadian once again running daily between Sudbury and Montreal, replacing the three-day weekly train to Ottawa. Additionally, seasonal service between Sudbury and White River was upgraded to run year-round, improving speeds for the Canadian in the process. The Supercontinental also resumed on a shorter route, running between Winnipeg and Vancouver, replacing the Panorama train from Winnipeg to Edmonton. In September of that year, service in Alberta between Calgary and Edmonton was cancelled, followed in November by service in Ontario from Thunder Bay to Sioux Lookout. May 1986 saw further service cancellations in Ontario, with trains between Nikina and Hearst ending service. In June 1988, however, a new tourist train run by VIA began operating in British Columbia, running in daylight between Vancouver and Kamloops before splitting into two and continuing to Jasper, Banff and Calgary. In April 1989, the Skeena train was cut back from Edmonton to Jasper, reducing duplication along this section of the network. In January 1990, another round of government budget cuts saw more dramatic service reductions to the network. Service on the Canadian was reduced to run only three days per week, with routing revised to travel along the Supercontinental's route, which was discontinued at that time. As part of this, service between Montreal and Sudbury ended, while Canadian service between White River, Ontario and Winnipeg was also cut at that time. Trains on the northern line between Sudbury and Winnipeg, Sudbury and Sioux Lookout, and Winnipeg and Sioux Lookout were replaced by the Canadian, 
while service on the Canadian between Winnipeg and Vancouver was shifted to the former Supercontinentals route. In May, the Rocky Mountaineer tourist train in British Columbia was transferred to a private operator, ending publicly funded trains to Calgary, Alberta. The network continued to operate relatively unchanged for another five years, until service was expanded in May 1995. At that time, Amtrak reintroduced service from Vancouver to Seattle, Washington, with the Mount Baker International beginning daily service. In September 1996, routing for the Canadian was changed in southern Ontario, with trains now using a different line to travel from Toronto to Sudbury. In October 1998, Amtrak's service between Vancouver and Seattle was renamed to the Amtrak Cascades, although no schedule changes in Canada accompanied this switch. In 1999, service in the Vancouver area was changed on the Canadian, with Port Coquitlam Station being closed for service. However, in October 2000, service was further revised, with trains beginning to operate in a one-way loop from Vancouver to Kamloops and resuming service to Mission. Northern Manitoba saw service reduced in 2001, with the once-weekly train from Wabodin to Churchill ending. In September 2002, service continued to change in Northern Manitoba, with trains to Lynn Lake being cut back to Pukatawagan. This evolved further in April 2006, when this route was transferred to a private operator. In August 2009, Amtrak service into Canada was improved, with a second daily trip beginning on the Amtrak Cascades route. This new trip followed the existing route from Vancouver to Seattle, before continuing south to Portland, Oregon. In May 2011, poor track conditions on Vancouver Island, British Columbia forced the cancellation of the Malahat train. Service was also adjusted on the Hudson Bay train in Manitoba, with trains between Winnipeg and Napa being reduced to run only twice per week. In May 2017, flooding on that line forced the suspension of trains between Gillam and Churchill, with service patterns on the rest of the line being revised. Track repairs were completed in December 2018, however, and service returned to its regular service patterns at that time. This brings us to the Western Canada Via Rail network that we know today. That was the evolution of Western Canada's Via Rail network, giving us the four Via routes and one Amtrak line that we know today. If you haven't already, be sure to watch our video on the complete evolution of Canada's Via Rail network, as well as our in-depth videos on Eastern and Central Canada's network evolution, which you can access by clicking the button in the top right corner of this video. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and comment down below to join in the discussion. My name's Zach, and I'll be vanishing underground until the next one.